Dealing with disrespect. Did you know that on average, people face disrespectful situations at least once a week? How can we use these moments not only to survive, but to thrive? Let's discover nine stoic lessons that turn disrespect into steps for our personal growth. When we encounter disrespect, whether in the hustle and bustle of everyday life or in moments of tranquility, how can we find serenity and maintain our dignity intact? This is an invitation to explore nine stoic lessons that guide us to transform the poison of disrespect into an elixir of personal growth. Are you ready? Lesson number one, perception as a gateway to inner peace. It is not external events that disturb us, but the way we interpret them, Epictetus taught us. This fundamental lesson of Stoicism reveals that an insult or a gesture of disrespect by itself does not have the power to cloud our spirit unless we grant it such power. Face each episode of disrespect as a challenge to your perception. Ask yourself, does this truly have the power to alter my essence? Think about it. How many times have you allowed others' opinions to darken your day? Imagine if instead, you could see these moments as opportunities to strengthen your inner tranquility. With each confrontation, you have the choice to react with disturbance or with understanding. I invite you to reflect. How can this new perspective transform your daily reactions? By modifying our interpretation of events, could we not only navigate challenges with more serenity, but also lead others to a more peaceful state? By adopting a more conscious and reflective view, we begin to see each obstacle not as a hindrance, but as a step in our journey of personal growth. Remember, it is your perception that shapes your experience. Why not choose a perspective that promotes peace and understanding? In your next challenge, before allowing agitation to take over, pause and ask yourself, does this event truly define who I am? Or could it simply be an opportunity for me to demonstrate my ability to remain calm and rational? This shift in perspective can not only help you achieve lasting peace, but also inspire those around you to seek the same inner balance. Lesson number two, the response lies in reflective withdrawal. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor and philosopher, always advised us that the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. When faced with disrespectful situations, we have the alternative to pause thoughtfully, take a deep breath, and choose an attitude that reflects our noblest principles instead of responding impulsively. Imagine yourself in a situation where someone directs harsh words at you. Instead of replying with the same intensity, you choose to withdraw. In this moment of pause, you not only avoid unnecessary escalations, but also make room for deeper reflection. Why did this person act this way? Is there a way to approach this situation that could turn a confrontation into a constructive dialogue? This ability to emotionally distance ourselves from immediate circumstances allows for clearer analysis and reinforced emotional control. This strategy not only protects our inner peace, but also positions us as examples of maturity and composure. How can you practice this skill in your daily life? By starting with small gestures, such as counting to 10 before responding to a provocative email, could you gradually strengthen your ability to withdraw reflectively? By incorporating this habit, I invite you to reflect on the changes that may emerge not only in your relationships, but also in your own well-being. It may be surprising how much a simple pause can transform potentially volatile situations into opportunities for personal growth and mutual understanding. Right now, think of a recent challenge. How could a reflective withdrawal have altered the outcome? Visualize yourself applying this strategy the next time you face a similar situation. Imagine the power and peace you can cultivate by choosing to respond rather than react. Lesson number three. The art of selective indifference. Stoic teachings offer us a powerful tool, selective indifference. 
This practice encourages us to direct our attention exclusively to what truly matters, letting go of what does not contribute to our personal growth. When facing disrespectful situations, it's worth asking yourself, will this contribute in any way to my development? If the answer is negative, it's wise to allow that experience to pass through you without impact. Imagine how often we encounter comments or attitudes that at first glance seem to belittle us. By adopting selective indifference, these minor aggressions lose their power over us. Instead of consuming your energy with resentments or frustrations, you choose to preserve your emotional well-being. How can you apply this in your life? Start by identifying which aspects of your life receive more attention than they truly deserve. It could be a colleague who always has something negative to say, or that criticism you read on social media. By practicing selective indifference, you not only protect your energy, but also sharpen your focus on the areas that truly matter. Moreover, this practice can lead to a significant increase in your sense of peace and purpose. When you stop worrying about what is trivial, you create more space in your life for what is truly enriching. It's like decluttering a cluttered house by removing what is unnecessary, what is valuable stands out. So the next time you encounter something that would normally disturb your day, ask yourself if it's really worth your energy. If it's not, simply let it pass. By doing so, you not only conserve your energy for what is essential, but you also cultivate a resilience that can profoundly transform your way of living and interacting with the world around you. Lesson number four, fortitude in the face of frustration. Confucius, with his timeless wisdom, advises us, demand much of yourself and expect little from others. Thus, you will avoid many annoyances. This thought guides us to understand that internal fortitude is a barrier against external turbulence. The disrespect we often receive is a reflection of the internal struggles of those who disrespect us, not a reflection of our own shortcomings. By internalizing this idea, we strengthen our emotional resilience. When someone treats us with disdain, instead of absorbing that negativity as a personal failure, we can see it as a manifestation of the difficulties the other person is facing. This distance allows us to respond with empathy and patience rather than reactivity. How can we cultivate this fortitude? Start by strengthening your self-esteem and self-confidence. Dedicate yourself to activities that reinforce your personal worth, whether through continuous learning, mindfulness practice, or physical exercise. Each step in this direction not only increases your internal resilience, but also prepares you to deal with adversities in a more balanced way. Moreover, by expecting less from others and more from yourself, you reduce dependence on external approval and increase your emotional autonomy. This doesn't mean having negative expectations about people, but rather a realistic understanding that everyone is dealing with their own battles. Now think of a recent moment where you felt frustrated by the actions or words of another person. How could internal fortitude have changed your reaction? Imagine yourself next time using that strength to choose a response that honors your well-being and maintains your integrity. Remember, building emotional fortitude is not an act of isolation, but a strengthening process that allows you to face adversities with serenity and understanding. By practicing this, you not only protect yourself, but also create the possibility of assisting others in their own struggles. Lesson number five, empathy. Empathy is more than just putting yourself in someone else's shoes. It's a bridge to understanding and tolerance. When someone disrespects us, our instinctive reaction may be defense or judgment. However, by choosing empathy as our response, we turn disrespect into an opportunity to deepen our understanding of the motivations and contexts that drive others' actions. This process not only dissipates tensions, 
but also cultivates an environment of mutual respect. Imagine what it would be like if, in every conflict situation, we pause to consider the possible reasons behind others' words and actions. Perhaps they are having a difficult day, dealing with personal issues, or simply unaware of the impact of their words. How can we practice more empathy in our daily lives? Start by actively listening, without preparing your response while the other person is still speaking. Show genuine interest in others' experiences and feelings. This kind of attention can open doors to more sincere and less conflict-ridden dialogues. Moreover, when faced with disrespect, trying to understand the other person's context can help us respond more constructively. This not only relieves the emotional burden of the situation, but can also inspire positive behavior change in others. Think of a recent situation where you could have responded with more empathy. How could this approach have changed the outcome? By practicing empathy, you not only enrich your own experiences, but also contribute to a world where mutual understanding is the norm, not the exception. Incorporating empathy into our daily interactions is a step towards personal and interpersonal excellence. By doing so, we not only transform challenges into growth opportunities, but also spread the positive influence that can reverberate through our communities. Lesson number six, growth through conflict. Seeing every disrespect situation as a chance for self-examination and personal growth is a transformative perspective. Just like a tree that facing strong winds strengthens its roots and grows stronger, our resilience and character develop in the face of adversity. When confronted with disrespect, instead of feeling diminished or attacked, we can use these moments as catalysts for self-discovery and improvement. This challenges us to question our own reactions and to seek ways of acting that reflect who we truly want to be. How can we activate this transformation in moments of tension? Start by asking yourself, what is this situation teaching me? Perhaps it's a lesson about patience, compassion, or even about our own limits and needs. Each challenge is an opportunity to practice and strengthen these qualities. Moreover, recognizing that conflict can be a vehicle for personal growth changes the way we perceive and react to it. Instead of seeing it as a threat, we can consider it a difficult but valuable teacher. By embracing this view, our ability to deal with future situations expands and we become better equipped to maintain our integrity and serenity. Think of a recent conflict. How did you react? Now imagine if you had seen that situation as an opportunity to develop a specific quality in yourself. How could this change in perspective have influenced your actions and results? Promoting the idea that we can grow through conflict is a fundamental step in building a more resilient and meaningful life. Each challenge faced with this mindset not only strengthens us, but also better prepares us for future adversities, making us living examples of perseverance and continuous evolution. Lesson number seven, the beauty of detachment. Marcus Aurelius, with his wise words, teaches us, if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. This teaching is an invitation to detachment, especially from the incessant need for external approval. Detachment does not mean indifference or lack of passion. On the contrary, it is a form of emotional freedom that allows us to experience life more fully and authentically. When we depend on external validation, our self-esteem is at the mercy of others' opinions and actions. By detaching ourselves from this need, we gain autonomy over our own happiness. How can we practice this detachment in our daily lives? Start by observing the moments when you feel most vulnerable to criticism or judgment from others. In those moments, ask yourself, am I seeking approval here? Is this really necessary for my personal satisfaction?
By questioning our motivations, we begin to understand and diminish our dependence on external validations. Moreover, cultivating self-acceptance is essential. Learning to recognize and celebrate your own achievements, regardless of external recognition, reinforces confidence in your abilities and decisions. This not only strengthens your sense of self-worth, but also promotes lasting inner peace. Imagine the relief and freedom that come with detachment from the need for external approval. What would your life be like if you truly didn't care about what others think of you? Visualize yourself making decisions based on what is best for you, not on what is most approved by others. By adopting detachment, you not only improve your emotional health, but also make room for more genuine and satisfying relationships to flourish in your life. That's the beauty of detachment. By releasing the excess worry about the external, we cultivate an internal garden of peace and contentment that flourishes under any circumstance. Lesson number eight, self-sufficiency as safeguard. Self-sufficiency is often misunderstood as a sign of indifference or insensitivity. However, in the true sense of the term, being self-sufficient means discovering a source of contentment and inner peace that does not depend on external opinions or approvals. This ability is a powerful safeguard against the emotional fluctuations caused by circumstances or others' attitudes. Imagine being able to navigate through life with a sense of complete integrity and security, knowing that your worth is not tied to how others perceive you. This doesn't eliminate the importance of relationships or the relevance of community, but emphasizes that true peace comes from within. How to develop this self-sufficiency? Start by dedicating time to activities that strengthen your sense of identity and purpose, such as hobbies, meditation, or study. These practices not only increase your self-confidence, but also deepen your understanding of who you are and what truly matters to you. Moreover, practice regular reflection. Ask yourself, what truly makes me happy? And what do I need to feel fulfilled and satisfied? These questions can lead to significant discoveries about your true needs and desires, helping you build a life more aligned with your internal values. It's also important to learn to comfort yourself in moments of loneliness. View these periods as opportunities to connect with yourself rather than moments of isolation. The ability to be alone and not feel lonely is a clear sign of emotional self-sufficiency. By strengthening your self-sufficiency, you not only create a shield against external adversities, but also pave the way for lasting well-being. Imagine the freedom to act on your own terms, free from the chains of external approval. That's the true power of self-sufficiency, an internal refuge that no external storm can shake. Lesson number nine, achieving coherence. The essence of Stoicism is grounded in the coherence between our thoughts, words, and actions. When this alignment is achieved, we become internally strengthened and external insults lose their impact on us. This not only emotionally protects us, but also guides us towards a life of greater integrity and authenticity. Consider how your life could transform if your actions always reflected your deepest beliefs and your words resonated with your truest values. This congruence creates an internal fortress that is immune to fluctuations and external opinions. To cultivate this coherence, start by reviewing your beliefs and values. Are your daily actions in harmony with these principles? If there are discrepancies, what adjustments can you make to better align your behaviors with your convictions? This exercise not only clarifies your direction, but also strengthens your resolve to stay true to yourself. Furthermore, remember that practicing coherence is an ongoing exercise. It involves constant self-assessment and adjustment. This may mean saying no when something doesn't align with your values or saying yes to challenges that promote your personal growth, even if they initially seem uncomfortable. 
As you reflect on these stoic lessons, consider how each of them can apply to your life. Perhaps it's the art of detachment that speaks most to your heart. Or maybe selective indifference offers you the key to preserving your energy for what truly matters. Whatever the lesson, each one is an invitation to embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. I invite you then to ponder which of these lessons resonate most with your personal experiences. How can you implement them practically to not only survive but truly thrive even in the midst of adversity? Join us in this journey of self-awareness and resilience. Together, as a community committed to growth and wisdom, we can transform disrespect and difficulties not into barriers, but into bridges to a more fulfilling and serene existence. May these principles inspire us to cultivate serenity and strength, regardless of the storms we face.